Shields up, Iron Breakers. We're kind of here coming at you with another episode of Khan's Cast, and today we're going to be talking about my experience with Legend of Zelda. So last week, I got to actually play Legend of Zelda over at Nintendo headquarters in Portugal on a Wii U, naturally, because they're not showing the NX version just yet, which is, to be completely honest, the platform where I want to play this game. And let me just tell you, if I was already excited about this title after all the footage that we've seen at E3... Actually playing the game made me only that much more excited about it. Now, I think I played around two hours of it, something along those lines, uh, because I got really obsessed over this boss that was in the game, but you could only play the game in like 15-minute chunks, which means I would have to go get a bunch of weapons because weapons break in Zelda. I will get more into more detail about that. Uh, so I had to constantly get a bunch of weapons so that I could go and kill this boss. Um, and so I just kind of obsessed over it and just spent most of my two hours just in 15 minute chunks trying to gather the necessary materials to actually kill the boss, which was pretty fun in and of itself. But uh, let's start by the beginning because I'm already getting carried away, uh, which is a good sign when I'm getting carried away talking about a video game. It means that I'm probably really excited about that specific video game. Anyway, let's go from the start. This is the first Zelda that is in an open world. Now, previous Zeldas have had uh, some exploration elements to it, uh, particularly A Link Between Worlds comes to mind. That's the name of that one, I think, where it's got a more open uh, openness to it that allows you to go in multiple different directions and explore different things depending on the items that you get and stuff like that. And that was pretty cool. I haven't finished that one, gotta be honest, but it's definitely one of the best Zeldas I've played. Um, but the Zelda that I've played the most has to be Twilight Princess, to give you guys my Zelda background, so to speak. Um, and I played quite a bit of Twilight Princess. It's probably the only Zelda that I've finished, uh, which is a bit shameful, to be honest. But uh, at the same time, uh, you guys got to understand that I was playing other consoles and whatnot. So, yeah, didn't get to play a whole lot. Of Actually, at the time, in Zelda's heyday, I was probably playing mostly PC, so... Yeah, there's that to it. But anyway, let's get focused on Breath of the Wild once again. Open world. What does this mean? It means that you have a lot of things that you can do in the world, which is obvious as most open world games like GTA, Assassin's Creed, that kind of stuff. You have a lot of things that you can do, uh, including uh, multiple things to explore, shrines to solve, which are kind of like these mini dungeons with puzzles and stuff like that. Uh, you have multiple encounters with enemies. You have a day-night cycle, uh, which if I'm not mistaken, it's like it's one hour in game is like one minute. So like, you know, over the course of roughly half an hour, you will go through one full day-night cycle in the game, which is uh, it's pretty cool. You get to just run around, do all kinds of stuff. There are certain enemies that you will encounter at night, certain enemies that you encounter during day. Um, and the really cool aspect of it I found was definitely the exploration. Like exploration was what kept driving me, uh, apart from that boss battle that I got fixated into going into 15 minutes after 15 minutes, but like exploration, I really got into it, uh, particularly because of the diversity of means of travel that you have. Now, obviously we've seen footage, um, of Link going on Epona and that kind of stuff. Um, but in the, the version that I played, I didn't actually rode a horse. I don't know if you actually could or could not. You might have been able to, and I just never did it. But what, what you could do is I got to explore the climbing mechanic, which is basically like a stamina gauge, so you can climb pretty much anything, so long as you have enough stamina to go all the way through it. Um, you can also do uh, shield surfing, which was pretty cool. Did a lot of that and gliding. I didn't really get to experience gliding because that was like in the dev only build or whatever. So they showed it to me and I got to see how it works and it was pretty cool. Uh, I'll, I'll give you guys a, a bit more detail about that. But before we move on, it's like imperative that we talk about the visuals of this game. This game looks amazing. It, it, it looks just like, you know how people said about Street Fighter 4 that it looks like, a, what was it? Like a, a painting in motion? This game kind of does that, but it still has its own unique art style that I feel is something that Nintendo does really well in most of their first party titles on the Wii U. Like they all have that Nintendo simplistic art style that just works at the same time bringing a lot of performance to the table. 
Now, the performance part of it, gotta say, was a little bit rough around the edges. Now, obviously, this is like mega alpha because let's be honest here, um, the game, I'm not sure if you guys can hear that or not. There's there's a train that goes by in my new studio every now and then, so if you hear that in the background of my recordings, I'm sorry. There's not a whole lot I can do to prevent that. Anyway, what I was saying is that um, the... Um, the, the, the performance on the Wii U, uh, like I said, it, it's like it's still mega alpha uh, because the game itself is only going to come out like March 2017. Um, so there's still a lot of room for improvement. But right now it was struggling to keep up with 30 FPS, which was a little bit disheartening because usually Nintendo goes for that 1080p silky smooth 60 FPS on their first parties. And then you see uh, that, uh, yeah, Zelda Breath of the Wild takes a lot out of the console. It's basically um, a, a lot out of the console. I mean, it's basically pushing the console to its very limits was the, um, was the impression that I came out of it uh, thinking, at least. But again, it is a beautiful art style. And regardless of whether or not you're playing it at 30 FPS or 60 FPS, potentially on the NX, I'm assuming, uh, I think that whoever gets into this game is going to have a lot of fun. Like I was there just like solidly playing repeatedly until I, I basically told um, the, my friend who was there um, at Nintendo, I told him, look, I'm going to just keep playing until you kick me out. And he didn't kick me out because I just kept playing until I had to come back to work and do squadron stuff. <laughs> so I just <laughs> stayed there and played for as much as I wanted, which was really cool. Um, but yeah, Beautiful art style, beautiful visuals, uh, animations are great, which is good because you guys know that I'm more about animations. I always bring this up. I think by now you guys know. Uh, the animations are just like super smooth, really awesome. Uh, so let's talk about some of the stuff that you can uh, that you can do in the game. There are these shrines that I didn't actually do. I saw one of them done, I think, uh, which are basically like these mini dungeons with puzzles and stuff that you can do to manipulate the environment. Uh, there's this magnetic thing that you get that allows you to um, levitate and manipulate uh, like metal objects. And that allows you to do uh, some really neat stuff because there's a couple of puzzles in the game that are physics puzzles. And with this magnetic power, you could actually, um, you could actually like set up stuff like uh, the guy who was demoing the, the game for us basically made a catapult. So this game has a lot of physics on it. And beyond physics, there's a lot of just systems in the game that interact with each other in really cool ways. And I'm going to be talking a little bit more uh, in detail about that. I just wanted to kind of give you guys an idea about the, the shrine stuff, which are little puzzles that you can do. Uh, some of those puzzles will give you special powers. Like I started with having the, the bomb power already, which is you can just like spawn a bomb on top of you, then you can throw it. And the, that bomb also reacts to physics. So like if you throw it down a, a hill, it will roll down the hill and then you can detonate it uh, whenever you want. Uh, you can also just grab it, drop it, or throw it and then detonate it. There's a lot of options as to what you can do with uh, the bomb itself uh, beyond the stuff that you can already do with the magnetic power and other stuff that you will get throughout the game as well, which is pretty cool. Uh, there are some World Bosses, which was the thing that I focused on the most, uh, and it was a pretty cool encounter that I had with this uh, Stone Guardian, which he had a very obvious vulnerability on top of him. So what I, what I would have to do to kill that specific Guardian is like he's got this, he's just made of rock. He's like, imagine a rock elemental. Um, and on top of him, there's like this mineral thing coming out of his head. So you have to climb to the top of him and then whack at the... Um, smack at that uh, mineral thing until he dies because that's the only place where he actually loses energy and I spent quite a bit of time um, confronting that boss because like I said weapons have limited durability and once that durability is over you're pretty much done with that weapon the weapon just breaks and this is I know going to bring um, a lot of confusion to people because people are going to be like what do you mean weapons just break uh, in case you haven't been following the E3 stuff uh, in the demo that I was playing Weapons would just break, and if you wanted a new weapon, you would have to go and collect new weapons. Now, they're not really talking about whether or not weapons are repairable. At least this is what they told me at Nintendo. I specifically asked, can you repair weapons? Is that going to be a thing? And he's like, we're not talking about that just yet. So at this point in time, I'm going to assume that you can't repair weapons. And the way it works <clears throat> is that if you need a weapon, you have to go fight something to get that weapon. 
that's the idea that I personally got from this demo. Like, the thing is, most enemies that you fight, they will drop their weapon. Not most. I think all of the enemies that you fight will drop their weapons. At least in the demo, that's how it worked. So you'll locate an, an enemy that has a good weapon. You go after him. You kill him by whatever means necessary. And there's many ways. Like, you can roll stones down hills and just crash them you can throw bombs you can burn them using fire you can do all kinds of ways to kill um your enemies and then after you kill them you just take their weapon um i found uh, a specific monster which was like seemed like he was some kind of a um, bokoblin champion or something and he had like this special sword which is the sword that i used to kill the um, the um, this boss that I kept fighting uh, because that sword just did a whole lot more damage than anything else I had picked before. But it was also an interesting um, fight that you had to do before in order to get access to that sword. So there was that as well. So taking into consideration that we're talking about weapons and how I just said, in my opinion, that's the way weapon durability is going to work. It's like your weapons are, you know, single use item. I mean, not single use. You can swing them around a couple of times but once they break they're gone and you're going to be uh farming weapons basically off of enemies and stuff like that that's the idea that i get from the game anyway um beyond that uh let's talk about the actual combat so how does combat work well you can uh lock on just like pretty much uh and he's like well it's not really lock on technically you're just raising your shield and he kind of goes into uh you know it goes into an almost lock on thing but you're not really locking on to enemies so to speak and then you can attack them with your sword. Uh, you can also use your specials like your bombs and stuff like that during combat. And uh, they have something which feels like they were... Um, it feels like it was taken out directly from Bayonetta, which is um, the Flurry Rush is what they're calling it in the game. Uh, it's basically like if you do a perfect dodge, which you can dodge by holding up your shield and then jumping left and right um, while you are in combat. And that will you know, make you do a little a little dodge. So if you dodge at the exact right time, uh, time slows down and you get the opportunity for a flurry rush, which you can then just slash at your enemy like nobody's business and you get a lot of really good damage in. So timing your dodges is going to be um, something that you will need to take in mind, particularly against tougher enemies and stuff like that. Otherwise, you're going to get uh, rocked. Uh, you can also disarm your enemies using a parry mechanic. Uh, the parry mechanic works very much like you'd expect, like... Considering that you guys are on my channel, if you know how to parry in Dark Souls, it's pretty much the same thing. You press a button, I, don't, I think it was the B button on the, on the Wii U gamepad. You press that exactly when you're about to get attacked, and Link just does a parry motion with his shield. And if you time it just right, it will disarm your enemy. And at that point, you can actually just steal your uh, enemy's weapon to prevent him from picking it up again. Now, enemies will keep trying to do anything uh, within their power to attack you. Like we've even seen um, in the demo, I saw him disarming an enemy and then taking the weapon away so that the enemy couldn't attack you. And he just starts scrounging in the ground, just starts throwing rocks at you. I thought that was hilarious. But yeah, they start scrounging and trying to look for things to defend themselves. So say, for instance, you have two enemies, right? You kill one of them, then you go to kill the other one, you steal his weapon. Uh, he is going to look around. He might find the weapon from the enemy that you killed previously, arm himself and attack you with it. So... That's going to be a thing. Also, it was really cool to see that you have uh, many weapons that you can use. Um, like even I, I had a mace, which you take from the Buck Goblins. Uh, I had a, an axe, which you mostly use for chopping down trees and stuff like that. But I was using that for combat because it felt very satisfying and dwarvish, of course. Uh, so that is what I was using. Uh, now, beyond the flurry rush, the parry, the arm, there are um, these things which are the slow motion shots. Now, if you guys remember the very first footage that we've ever seen on Zelda, there was this thing where Link jumps out of his horse and everything becomes slow motion while he pulls out his bow and stuff like that. You can do that in the game. Like, you can literally just do that. I saw it being done. It was not out of the horse, but it was out of the um, glider thing. So uh, the person giving us the demo was going in uh, with a glider. Then he let go, uh, pressed the button to aim the bow. Bow goes into slow motion, lands a headshot. It was beautiful. So there's that, uh, the slow motion shots, if you are in the middle of the air. Uh, and there's many ways to do this because, like, if you have the glider and, say, you set fire to something, it creates an, upwards, an upward draft, which you can then just turn, um, 
turn on the glider. You can then just grab the glider, go onto that upwards draft, and just, you know, get some air, then switch the bow, slow motion. Uh, that's pretty cool. Uh, if you land headshots, those will be critical hits that will deal uh, a lot more damage. You can also throw any weapon that you want. So say you have a sword, something you can um, throw the sword. I believe that weapon throws are always critical, but I'm not 100% sure. And I don't know if you get to recover the weapon. I think it probably counts as multiple swings when you throw it. So you might just break it. So you got to be careful about that. Uh, there's also uh, a stealth mechanic, um, which you you are able to like stealth around and sneak. You can crouch and that will make uh, Link do less noise. There's actually a, an indicator on screen that tells you how much noise you're making in case you want to make like a stealth playthrough type of thing. And if you sneak up on someone and attack them, you get a sneak attack, which gives you more damage, stuff like that. So that is combat in a nutshell. There's obviously much more to it than that because everything in this game, uh, they're taking it like a puzzle. So the way in which you engage combat can be a puzzle in and of itself. So say, for instance, you encounter a group of bokoblins in the middle of the forest, right? They haven't seen you yet. You've seen them. There is a multitude of ways that you can deal with that. Like, for instance, are there rocks above them? You can probably go uh, circle around from behind and then just throw a rock at them or something like that. Kill them just through the physics engines. You can set them on fire if the wind is blowing in the right direction. Uh, they might have barrels next to them that explode. You can throw a bomb in there, blow them up. Uh, you can just engage straight up in combat. You can sneak around. Uh, you can distract them. There's tons of approaches that you can have uh, to stuff like that. And that is something that I find very, very appealing personally. Now, beyond that, um, there's also um, healing in this game is made through um, food, basically. Um, doesn't seem like enemies actually drop healing items. It seems that, that you're going to have to cook stuff. And the cooking is actually pretty fun. You mix up like five ingredients, you throw them on a cooking pot, and food comes out. That's pretty much the way it works. And that food it can give you buffs, like it can give you extra hearts temporarily. It can give you resistance to cold. It can give you resistance to fire. So depending on the recipes that you make, you're going to get different effects. So you're going to have to learn to identify what does this ingredient do when I put it in the cooking pot? Is this something that I want? You know? That kind of stuff. Lots of experimentation uh, with the food at this point. Uh, you can also use uh, certain items that you get in the world to like craft potions and stuff like that. So there seems to be a pretty robust crafting system in the game. Even though uh, this is mostly for consumables, as I was saying. Because weapons, like I said, seem to be one use at least at this point. Um, so basically, in its entirety... The game feels, at least that's the, the impression that, that I came uh, out of that experience that I had with it. Um, I came out of it feeling like this game feels like a playground. It's like there are these systems that interact with all these other systems on top of other systems. So like you have the physics engine, you have the wind, you have the fire, you have all of these things that allow you to just like come up with a logical solution to the way that you want to deal with every encounter so for instance uh there were sections where you could chop down trees and make a bridge and this was all supported by the physics engine note none of this stuff was scripted if you've seen it in the footage like on the um, on the e3 footage and you've seen the them chop down a tree tree falling down this is all physics simulation so there's no scripted stuff in in that kind of content so dropping trees down to make a bridge is one thing. The other thing is I was in an area where the wind was blowing a certain way. So I set fire to a couple of dry leaves and the fire started spreading all over the place because of the way the wind was blowing. Um, I've, I've, I've done the whole throwing rocks at your enemies thing. Uh, it's just, it's amazing. It, it just looks like it's going to be uh, extremely, extremely fun, extremely interesting and I just want to kind of like I just want to play more basically like I almost felt like I was torturing myself at one point because I'm like man I'm playing this thing right now and I'm only going to be able to touch it again in 2017 so I was really excited um and that that's my takeaway from what I've seen of Zelda so far like I said uh this is a game that I personally want to play on the NX because I think it's going to be running a lot better 
on the NX than on the Wii U. On the Wii U, the performance was really not impressive. Uh, but the ga- it, it is impressive, however, that they were able to put all that stuff in the Wii U. You know? Like, the performance isn't great, but it's impressive that the Wii U can run that game with those graphics, with that beautiful art style, those animations, even if at 30 FPS. You know what I mean? So, I don't think necessarily, like, if you want to save up and maybe... If, if you're not if you're not the kind of person that wants to buy an NX, I don't think you're getting shortchanged by playing this on the Wii U. But I think the experience on the NX is going to be a lot better, obviously. But yeah, like I said, personally, I'm going to be playing it on the NX. I really enjoyed what I've played so far. And, you know, seeing something online and actually playing it can give you a completely different idea of how the game plays. How, how responsive is it like? How are the controls? Um, does it feel good to actually play this game? And the answer to that is yes, it does. It looks and plays amazingly from what I've seen so far. As soon as I know more about it, I'll be sure to let you guys know. Thank you very much for watching. If you have specific questions about Zelda Breath of the Wild, I'll be checking the comment sections of this video uh, for a couple of days at least to see if I can answer any questions that you guys might have. Thank you very much for watching, and I'll see you in the next one.